this study we're looking at LEDs in a horticulture application to look at not only the energy implications, the energy savings, but also to look at the non-energy benefits that the farmers will realize if they integrate LED technology into their operations. We started as a small garden center in South Minneapolis with an adjacent restaurant and conceptually everything at those two locations is produced and, and raised at our farm 45 miles away in Plato, Minnesota. We have our greenhouses and most greenhouses just sit dormant for a lion's share of the year. Well, we look at it as an opportunity to use the facility and extend the, the growing season. When the snow on the ground and the fields are frozen, we turn our efforts inside and we start using our greenhouses almost more as cold frames and uh, high tunnels. We have found that we can produce food of higher quality at a better value in Minnesota 12 months of the year versus shipping it in from somewhere far, far away. And at least you have the ability then to know you're getting good food, high quality food, nutritionally dense food from somebody you know. What's so exciting about LED technology is within the last three years, efficacy has improved at about 70% and we see costs coming down so dramatically. And in a greenhouse, that creates just a new frontier of opportunities for farmers who are growing in controlled crop environments when energy costs are a, a very big part of doing business. When we're starting to look at our energy consumption, particularly in the wintertime when it's the highest, we have to be very cognitive of what those inputs look like and then how we can maximize their use to have still a high quality product on the back end. Obviously there's a lot of alternatives and if we just start looking at ways we can either conserve, reduce, or change the source, it has a significant impact. The other aspect of this field of research that we're looking at is what are the plant outcomes from growing under LED lighting? What I noticed when you compared the plants under high pressure sodium lamps and under the LED lamps was the growth of the plants under the high pressure sodium lamps tended to be faster but not as strong and the rooting wasn't quite as strong and under the LED lamps you tended to have a more compact growth but a denser growth and you had stronger rooting and so I think the quality of the plants was actually a little bit better and a little bit closer to what they look like under sunlight under the LED lamps and under the high pressure sodium. The LED lighting side had a lot uh, less powdery mildew than the high pressure sodium. So that tells me that one is definitely producing a healthier, stronger, more disease resistant plant than the other. I think also the fact that you can regulate the wavelengths a little bit better, you can tailor the lights to a particular crop. You can have different LEDs, ones that have more blue light, ones that have more red light, and with high pressure sodium, the spectrum is what it is. LED lights for me make total sense, without question. I would definitely recommend LEDs. The next frontier is to be able to much more efficiently grow crops locally. And that's a real win in terms of conservation, in terms of sustainability, and keeping our growers producing here locally, and doing so year round using this new technology.